Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andrea here and I have got part two, excuse me I'll just move some stuff, of the great auction a camera haul. I'm just getting the camera ready so um, I'm just trying to get it bang on so it may take a little while. It won't be a sec. That's better, that'll do. Just to use the lid, I've been filming the first of the jewellery hauls. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, but we'll find out soon. So we're going to look at the first box. Here it is. So I've got it on a chair next, I'm going to take the lid off. Okay, pop that down here. Jennifer's actually asleep at the moment, so with any luck she'll stay asleep. So the first thing in the box is a brownie 127 camera outfit in its original cardboard box. I don't think you can get 127 film. So it's a brownie 127 camera with Dacon lens, camera case, and two number seven, two 127 Kodak Vericone pan films. So here's the camera in its box. So I don't know, is this Bakelite? I've got a bit of a cold, so I probably won't be able to tell anyway. It just smells of old camera and <laughs> I'm just having a look at this. It it looks and I, I can't guarantee it that there's like there's actually a film in it because it's actually on the number one. Don't know if you can actually see that. So there may actually be a roll of film in this. I do know somewhere I can get it developed. In fact, I could probably do it myself, but uh, I will have a look at that later. Here's the original camera case in the box. We've got the original paperwork. I'm going to leave this original paperwork in here because it's all complete. So we've got the little how to use it. I must actually have a look at that just to check. Then there's bits uh, about film. Colour processing, what's this? This is a little, the Design Centre London. There you go, it's a little tag that was on it. There is something about film in there and it is a roll of film in here. So there are two holes for rolls of film for the boxes to go in and somebody has put in here a box a roll of film so if I take the box out we can see that the roll of film is Kodak Tri-X pan and if this is only to go with on the last time this was used this roll of film expired in August of 1963 And it's exposed. So we have our, a, a roll of found definitely exposed film with metal pins in it. So I'm going to pop that back in and what I will do is I think my developing tank does 127. If it does I will set it to the 127 thing and try and develop it. I'll stand develop it. But it does it to me like there might well be a roll of film in here because it is on the number one. So it's in absolutely immaculate condition. There's not a scratch or scrape on it. I don't think this camera was used very often at all. So I'm going to have a look at that one and uh, see how that works. At least there is the instruction manual in it. Somebody really cared for this camera. It was probably a Christmas or birthday gift and they probably used it once or twice. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's on the, that roll of film. As I've got a cold, I'm drinking vitamin C. I am drinking my... Uh, Oh dear. So the next one is in one of these terrible plasticky ever ready cases. So there's the case. There's the back. It's Kodak. It is a Kodak camera. It is a Kodak Brownie 44A. Now again, this is on the number 12, so I think there might be a roll of film in it. I don't know how you I do know how you open it, so. It says pull down, but it's very stiff, so I will look at that later. I will give you an update on all these cameras and if there are rolls of films in them and if I get them developed, what they are. So it's a Daycon lens mount 320, a Brownie 44A camera with its original case, which you can take out. Kodak and it was it's one that was, was made in England it says on the back made in, in, in England London by Kodak so there you go there's that one another brownie 
we have got here a Bella 46 synchro flash so it's got on it oh god I can't even read that's terrible let me have a look Bellora anyway it doesn't look like there's a roll of film in this one that doesn't look like it so that's this one again it's a 127 camera made in Germany again it's fairly nice condition yeah there's nothing in there there you go there's the back and it's got part of an ever ready case on it because some of these cases were broken so I don't know there might be another one it'll fit in there and I can take it out and have a look so another one in one of these as they call never ready or ever ready cases these are cases are terrible and they're falling to bits this one is a Kodak Bensini film 120 so this takes 120 films so this is one if I can get an instruction manual and figure it out I should be able to test because it's got a it takes 120 I have no idea how it works um all I know is it's uh, not Kodak Cor K Coral K-O-R-O-L-L -L -L? but it's 120 made in Italy so I can at least have a fiddle with that one see if it works next in this box we've got oh let me get it out without damaging it it just says 35W on the front but on the top it says Yashica this is a good sturdy camera again I have no idea how the back opens on this one it might be a bottom I think it is yeah there is a switch on the back but I don't know what it does so again I am going to need a, a manual so I will look this up but yeah very dusty very dirty and dusty but the body itself the lens is very dusty doesn't look like there's any haze but is in remarkable good condition so I'm gonna have to look this one up not like it's some sort of range find by the look of it is it is there a square there's no square you'll have to excuse me made in Japan so that's the Yoshika 35W very heavy camera light off I've got a magnifying glass with a light on it next one is the Minolta Maxim 5XI I have no idea what the difference is between the, the Dynaxes and the Maxims whether it's just a country film but looks very good condition at the back I believe I've now received the battery that this one takes so I might try these it is missing it looks like it's missing part of the camera grip because it's it's open like that but do you know what? It's going to be fun to try it. Spot metering. See if it works. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six so far. I didn't count them yesterday. Now the next one is a Canon iX50. EOS iX50. So there's another Canon camera. Again, this one looks like it only takes... AAs but I'm not sure oh no CR2 times 2 takes two CR2s that's fine they're on order um I have no idea again there's no lens um it looks in fairly good condition I'm not even sure how the back opens Canon ink made in Taiwan is this an Avantix yes yeah, an Avantix one that's why I haven't I I was thinking I don't know how it opens um, so there's another Advantix one so that would have been their Advantix SLR the most pointless film type ever we have a box brownie so this is a Kodak I believe it's quite dirty Kodak six, yeah it's, well it takes Kodak film it says popular brownie takes 620 Kodak film now I can't get this to open at the moment because it's very 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 rusted on the side as you can see so it's going to take a little bit of finagling to get the thing there we are it's coming it's coming yeah I think I've got it now uh, uh, 
thing off so it, it will come out I just can't get the yeah a bit more it should go a bit more it's pretty stuck oh it's coming of course it's yeah I'm not actually sure how this would come apart because it's got so it's coming apart but I'm not actually sure how to get it completely apart this doesn't seem to want to go all the way down and it, you've got the you must have to take this off to get it open I would have thought I'll fiddle with that later there's a very old 620 Kodak or a brownie that takes Kodak film it looks like a Kodak brownie but until I get into it I'm not going to know but again I will be updating you on these cameras as and when I find out whether they're working or any further information I have a random Nikon strap so if anybody needs one I have a Nikon strap for you just keeping an eye on Jennifer but she's, a, she's sound asleep it's another one of these cases very plasticky very grey so this is a Kodak Bantam colour snap now I'm not sure what size film I, this takes probably 127 or something like 620 until I like I said I need to research into these there's a light settings um, a colour snap camera instruction reminder card for colour shots, for colour snapshots in daylight, or with blue flashbulbs, use Kodachrome film K828. Oh, is it 828? Yeah, film size 828. Never seen a film size 828 camera, that's interesting. So, again, it's very dusty, very dirty, but it's in pretty good condition, I think, because it's been in its uh, ever ready case for so long. It's just getting them back in afterwards. So. Like I said, a lot of these cameras, I'll sort that out after, have been taken out of their cases and I've got a bag full to sort them out. The dust probably isn't helping my nose. We have a little camera bag here with a compact of some description in it. So, this is a Miranda Autofocus Solar. So it's very, very plasticky thing. Okay. No batteries in it, battery compartment looks nice and clean. Um, takes double A's, back opens nice and easy. So it's just your basic compact. I will close it so to open, open, close. Um, yeah, so again, it's one of the things I'm gonna have to pop the uh, a battery in and test it. What I will do is a follow up video showing you or advising you with pictures which ones. Of these still work because so I probably will get rid of some of them. We have another Minolta. We have a Dynex 300 SI. Here we go, body only again. No film in that one. Again, I need to try and oh, the batteries here for that one. I think is the same as that goes in all the other ones. <laughs> Pretty much try and get that tested see if it powers up and then find the lens and get some body caps for them next we have a little dinky tiny thing look at this so this is an Italian camera it's a Benzini Comet made in Italy Milano I know nothing about this in fact it doesn't even look like the front moves at all shutter fires I don't know how you get it. Oh, I do know how you get it open. You need to get it open like that. The shutter works great, but it looks like. And that that winds. Not actually sure what size of film that is. Oh, there's a spool in, so I'd say it's probably something like 620. No, smaller, 127, possibly. There's a spool. That's so cool. But I will have a look at that just because I find these things fascinating but I think it's a 620 and now I can't get the spool back in which is typical front that in first so somebody set it up ready to use again by the look of it because it's in the winding side I'm gonna have to take it I don't know what to do with it can I put it in this side
got to remember these cameras haven't been used for so long that they are very stiff so I'll look at that later it doesn't matter if oh, they know I've got the spool for it safe let me put that one back in its bag anything in the front oh somebody left me a oh there's something in here hang on there's a wad of tissue oh there's a couple of Duracell batteries in there so they sensibly took them out of the camera but just didn't put them yeah so I'm going to put those into my bag of batteries to go to the waste transfer station next time I go up there with some waste we have a Hanamex lens cap we might have a Hanamex lens we've got a lot of lenses they're just not in this box they're in the next one now this is uh, quite a nice one this is heavy well in ever ready case I'm just going to take that off because that's doing my head in bit of paper this is a Practica MTL 5B this one's actually got the lens on it which is great it's missing the shutter button at the top Oh no, it's not, it's there. Oh, I like that. So that looks pretty nice. Obviously I've got lens cap on so I can't see myself. Yeah, that's it. Now this does take batteries because there's a meter in it. So obviously I would have to take it out of the camera case to put the, have a look at the batteries. Let's just take it out and have a quick look. It's quite, this is heavy duty camera mind. It's got a Pentacon lens on it. Is that out yet? That's the only thing with these, they take forever. I've actually got a roller flex and I've taken out, where's my five pence piece gone? I've done it again. Put everything all down and I've got to put my five pence piece on. Where is that? There it is. Um, I've got what I was saying now. Here we go. Button cells and they are in there. Well, there's one in there. So I'm going to take that out. I've got button cells and I'm not going to just try it now but I'm going to put it in the recycling thing. There we go. And we'll, we will test the light meter later. Of course if the light meter doesn't work, if that's the only thing that's powered, it doesn't really matter because you can actually use the... Um... Right, nothing inside, that's good. So there's the inside, it looks very, very clean, which is always a good thing. So yes, you can always use a light meter rather than that. So it goes from eight up to one one thousand a second. We know it fires off. Does it fire off properly? Are they different? Just put it on bulb. Yeah, that sounds right. Oh, that one didn't, oh, I haven't wound it on. Oh, stupid woman. Yeah, that sounds all right. Sounds okay. I cannot get used to it being here, because you've got that there, that's depth of field thing, I think. But, yeah, I like that one. That's really nice. So I'm going to enjoy testing all these. I'm going to sort myself out some colour kebs. I'm just going to pop that there. I'm not going to screw it back in. Oh, a bit of a um and run 24 i got some 24 exposures because i'm still testing that first one. Oh, this is just a an empty ever ready case which is cracked to hell it's been probably stored in something with some silica gel but there is a lens hood for a camera in a little case on there now it doesn't tell me what one so I will need to investigate fully so that's that box I'm just going to oh, excuse me pop the cameras back in and uh, I need to find somewhere else because I need that bike box or something else but um, I've got more of the long thin tops upstairs and I will pop that in as well I know that goes with uh, that one that one there. Sort that out later. Oh. It's horrible when you wake up with a cold. That uh, Nikon's right back in and the brownie. Lovely. I just need to find somewhere to put this out of the way. So for now, it's going to come over here. It's just so I can get out the next one. This one has lenses in it. 
So, if I get oh my god, it's, it weighs a ton. I'm not gonna lie, it's very, very heavy. It does weigh, it's very heavy. So, you know, look at some of these lenses. Most of these lenses are um, independent lenses, so they're, they're uh, secondary manufacturers, so they're not Canon or Nikon or Minolta, although there is a Minolta one in there. So the first one I have doesn't have a, a end back, but it does have the front cap and it's by Mirage. How you get the front cap off, I don't know. I'm afraid of breaking it, so I'll have a look at that. Again, I have no idea what camera this lens would go on. So it's going to be a question of getting them out and having a look. It's a 5.6 to f22. I can't tell whether there's any haze on because I can't get the bloody cap off. Is it unscrew? Oh, there it unscrews. No, it's a nice, nice clean zoom lens. There you go. But like I said, I have no idea what, what, which camera it goes for. There's so many of them. And some of these lenses might not go to any of the ones I've got. So next we've got one. Hello. It's got a Tamron lens hood on it. So, uh, and it's got a sun skylight on it. So it's a Tamron CF Tele Macro, 80 to 210, so that's this one. Again, I have no idea what camera this goes to because I don't have time to investigate. If you recognise the mount tool, please let me know because I would appreciate it. No lens cap on it, but it's got the lens hood on it, so I need to have a look at that. These just keep getting bigger and bigger. This one's been well loved and well used. It is a Prinz Galaxy. As you can see, it's got the little bracket so it could be mounted onto something. Mounted on the something on the lens on, on the hot shoe to keep it steady. It says lens made in Japan. Goes to 300, I think. It means to have a look, see if it says it. Prince Galaxy, yeah, 300 millimeter. Again, no idea what camera it goes to, but it's an awesome looking lens. They're getting bigger and bigger. Okay, camera next. The next camera is an Ilford Sporty. That's this one. The back's, I think, half open on this one. I'm not sure. No film in it from what I can see, but it's an Ilford Sporty. Hard to tell whether it works. Well, the shutter fires. Can we see it? I uh, can't see it, but so that's that one. So there's going to be a lot of cleaning and a lot of looking into things. A flash, this is a Boots Photo Flash 24 with its sync cable. No batteries, I believe. At least I hope. I think I checked. No, no batteries in it. It takes a lot. I think it takes six double A's, which is a lot of batteries. Another Minolta body. This is another Dynex 3000i. Again, with that same strange wear on the, the grip. Um, this one's got a bit of stuff on. I, I thought it was a scratch, but it's not. It's actually something stuck on the, the LCD. So there's a lot of these Minolta's in here. Oh, I'm feeling really rough. So next lens is an Asai Pentax. Let me just have a look. It's a one. Let me have a look at it. I'm not very good at this. Uh, 1.425. Uh, lens. It's quite nice. Blades move, move okay from what I can see. Yeah. And we have got the back on it as well, which is nice. So there we go. There's the back. Right, I will be stopping soon because we're already at 24 minutes. I'm going to get it to 30 and then that'll do for this one. And I'll be putting that in a different box. Right, there we go. And then, who knows where to go next? 
the lens hood for a Minolta, funnily enough, for a Minolta. Probably came off the Minolta lens. Um, that goes in there. So this is a Miranda lens for a Miranda camera. Lens made in Japan, 35 to 70 uh, 3.5 to 4.5 or however they work it. Yeah, 3.5 to, yeah, that, that's it. Moves fine, needs a clean. It's just a lens. I'm so tired of sniffing, I really am. Another lens, and then that's another Miranda lens. This is in a fluffy case, which has been, I think, made um, out of a tin can and cardboard because on the side it's got Heineken in it. So, you know, so I think this is a handmade lens carrier. So it's a Miranda. This one's uh, 2.8. So, yeah, 2.8 to 22. Looks nice. Yeah, blades move fine. There we go, pop that back in there for now. Miranda, another Miranda lens. Oops. Yeah, it's not got a flat bottom, so it won't stand up properly. We have a Hanamex lens for, I have no idea what kind of camera. Looks quite modern. Uh, oh, a Pentacon. Actually, a Practicar. So I think it's just a Hanamex lens cap on it. Four to 5.6. Yeah, four up to 22, or down to 22. But that's okay. Yeah. A bit sticky, there we go. But that, that's working okay. I think it's just they put a Hanamix lens cap on it because they didn't have the correct one. But it fits so it protects it. But again, I have no idea what camera it goes to. Um, yeah. Another lens, this is a Miticon Auto, Auto Miticon cam uh, lens, 1.28, 28mm, nice, yeah. Again, I have no idea what camera this goes to, I need to do some serious research into these. Should we have another camera or should we have another lens? There's lots of lenses still to come, so we'll grab this lens. Again, this looks like a modern one because it's got a springy cap on it. There you go. MD on the bottom. So again, this is a Miticon MC Zoom from some sort of camera system. So if somebody had some of these for... Oh, I say. Oh, a stiff whichever camera system it was and I need to figure it out. I have absolutely no idea. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it is, it's terrible because I have no idea. And last but not least, what should we do? We have a Minolta lens. Uh, this is a 35 to 80 AF zoom. I think this goes with the camera. We've got one, a body that colour in the, one of the camera bags and I think that one goes with that. Um, so yeah. So, yeah. Dinky little lens. I hope it does because if it does, it means I can test that. So although I've still got a lot to do, Okay, there is a sort of a thing here, which is a sort of like another one of those plug sockety things for non-earth appliances marked only. American Australian converter. <laughs> Got those. And I think this is a I think another lens, but I think this is broken because it doesn't have anything on it at all other than so part of it's there and part of it's not, or it's a teleconverter, I'm not actually sure. I think there is one of those in there. Um, 
Yeah, so that stops automatically for some reason. I think it's because we hit 30 minutes, so I am going to leave it there. So it's just this thing that I think might be a teleconverter or an extension tube. I'm not sure. I am going to have to have a look at it, look at it, uh, and see what I can figure out. So there's lots more of this stuff to come. So that's that's part two of the great camera haul, auction haul of 2018. <laughs> probably the only camera haul of 2018 but um, yeah if you know what any of these lenses are for which cameras please please do let me know because it would be a great help or if you've got any ideas how I can find out other than by trying to mount them on bodies and breaking them cameras that would be great obviously I know the Minolta one goes with a Minolta camera and there is a Minolta camera in there so I'm assuming it goes with that one I've got a Pentax one I don't think there's a single Pentax camera in there so I, I don't know is it a K-mount I don't know if it's a K-mount lens or not what else it would go with but uh, that's it for now I will be making another one of these fairly shortly so I hope you have enjoyed this and I will see you all very very soon so like share comment and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and I'll be back with more cameras very very soon so goodbye everybody bye